The Day the Gnomes Moved In by Kayla Hicks. What is it about? Laurel adores the magical gnome village along the walking trail, but she's heartbroken when it suddenly disappears. Determined to create her own enchanting gnome village, Laurel teams up with her parents to gather all the perfect pieces, but soon strange things start happening. The gnomes mysteriously move around the yard, and Laurel's dollhouses somehow find their way into the village. Could it be that the gnomes are coming to life? The gnome village on the walking trail was Laurel's absolute favorite. Every time her parents took her to walk on the trail, she asked to go see the gnomes so she could look into all of the tiny windows and all the wonderful, vibrant colors. But one day, Laurel's parents heard that the person who built the gnome village couldn't take care of it anymore and that they would be putting it away. At first, Laurel was sad, but then she had an idea. Can I build my own gnome village in our yard? She asked. Her mom and dad looked surprised. I'm not sure we will ever be able to make it as wonderful as the one on the walking trail, but we can make a small village, her mom said. Laurel set off to the garden store with her mom and dad to choose some gnomes to begin her village. She loved looking at all the different types of yard decorations there were. You can pick three to start, dad said. Can I pick a house too? They need a house to live in, she asked. How about this one, mom asked, pointing to a small blue house. They can't fit in there, Laurel said, scrunching her nose. Sure they can, her dad said. They can shrink when they want to. As soon as they got home, they got to work, choosing a spot to display their village, deciding on an area under the shade of a tree in their backyard, which was also a place Laurel could see from her bedroom window. Laurel used a rake to remove pine needles and stray rocks, clearing a small circular area until it was only dirt, and placed the gnomes in a circle facing her bedroom, their small blue house behind them. The next day, Laurel quickly finished her breakfast and raced outside into the bright sunshine, excited to check on her gnomes. But she froze minced up when she found her gnomes sitting in the middle of the backyard. Mom! Laurel called. Did you move my gnomes? Laurel's mom looked up from the garden. No. Hmm, she whispered, crouching down to get a better look. How did you get here? Moving them back to their village, Laurel began running around the backyard again, working on her cartwheels. Laurel, her mom said for lunch, what did I tell you about leaving your toys outside? Laurel looked up from her drawing, feeling confused. I didn't take any toys outside. Then why are your toy houses out near the gnome village? Looking at the sliding glass door, Laurel saw her large toy house and treehouse toys sitting next to the tiny blue one. Please go get it, her mom said. I think it's going to rain. Laurel trudged up the hill, wondering if her parents were playing a prank on her because she did not bring this house outside. Shh, someone said. She's coming. Laurel stopped. Who said that? I heard thunder, her mom said. Hurry up. Laurel grabbed her house and dashed back inside. You guys, I think the gnomes are alive, Laurel said. They are, her dad asked. How do you know? I think that's why the village keeps getting moved around, Laurel explained. Hmm, well, we were thinking of making another trip to the garden store for your village. Maybe that will help them get settled, her dad said. Okay, Laurel said, but I think we need to find a bigger house, or at least another one. The next morning, Laurel looked out the window and saw that her village was once again gnomeless, but her toy furniture was lying around the village. Walking down to the living room, Laurel jumped in surprise when the gnome sat in front of the sliding glass door on the porch, peering through the window. Dad? Laurel asked. Did you put my furniture outside or move the gnomes? No, why? he asked. No reason, Laurel muttered, bending down to look at the little gnomes. Time to go to the store, her mom called. At the store, Laura thought very carefully about her choices, looking at the houses and their sizes. Is it a tough choice, her dad asked. You have no idea, Laurel said. How about you grab some more gnomes too, her mom offered. Choosing a gnome with a blue hat and a treehouse-looking gnome home, Laurel was happy with her decisions. At home, Laurel walked right into her gnome village and began spacing out the houses and the gnomes. Listen up, little gnomes, Laurel warned. No more creeping inside to take my toys or I won't build any more of your village. Laurel, her mom asked, walked up the hill. I found these little sticks I thought we could use to make a fence, and I grabbed some plants so we could plant them around your village. Laurel and her mom poked small sticks into the ground and tied twine between them to create a small fence at the front of the village. Then they dug two small holes on either side of the village to plant a purple and white pansies that her mom had bought. What do you think? Her mom asked. 
I think they'll be great here, but we need one more thing. Racing down the hill, she pulled a solar light from the side of the house and brought it back to her mom. Can I have this for my village? Sure, her mom said. Later that night, Laurel peeked out her bedroom window to see that the gnomes were right where they belonged. The light from the solar light glowed in the darkness, showing off all the hard work she put into her little village. And for a moment, she swore she saw them wave at her. In the back of the book, there are facts about gnomes. Did you know the idea of gnomes began in the country of Germany? Or that gnomes are known to be earth dwellers who protect gardens and underground treasures? It's also known that in German folklore, they are known as Gardenswerg, which is a garden dwarf. Gnomes are also known to be nocturnal creatures, which means they wake up and do things during the night. During the night, they tend to their gardens, talk to other gnomes, and are quite the prankster. Just like most other children's books by Kayla Hicks, there are also free activities that pair with this book. You can find them at teacherpayteacher.com at the Kayla Hicks store. The Day the Gnomes Moved In is also available on Amazon. Also be sure to check out other books by Kayla Hicks like Dandelion and Today I'm Not Laurel.